I'm thinking of a number from 1 to 10. Guess it right, and you get a prize. Have your guess? I was thinking of pi. Precisely pi out to 117 decimal places. Did you get it? The prize was just the satisfaction of being correct. And to be fair, I was being a little sneaky. I did just ask for a number after all. But this sort of begs the question, what's a number? The concept of a number is something we all take for granted. We count, measure, and calculate with numbers every day, but what really is a number? Is it just a symbol on a paper or something more profound? Let's begin our exploration with the natural numbers. These are the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on, extending indefinitely. They're the most intuitive numbers, often first introduced to us in early education as counting numbers. The natural numbers serve as the foundation for all other types of numbers. They're the building blocks of our numerical systems and have been formalized through mathematical structures like the piano axioms, which define natural numbers in terms of sets. Though the natural numbers are counting tools, they're much more than that. They're fundamental concepts that underpin much of math and science. They serve as a starting point from which we extend our understanding to include other types of numbers, like zero, negative numbers, and beyond. So let's turn our attention there to zero and negative numbers. The number zero is fascinating in its own right. It serves as a placeholder in our decimal system, but it's much more than a symbol of nothing. In math, zero is the additive identity. It's the number that, when added to any other number, leaves that number unchanged. What about negative numbers? At first glance, they might seem counterintuitive. After all, how can you have less than nothing? Yet negative numbers are indispensable in various fields, from accounting to temperature measurement and scientific research. Together, zero and the negative numbers expand our numerical system to what we call the integers. This is all the natural numbers, their negative counterparts, and zero. With a solid understanding of these, we're now equipped to explore the rational numbers. These are the numbers that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers, often represented as a over b, where a and b are integers, but b is not zero. We're still not dividing by zero, after all. In the realm of rigorous mathematics, rational numbers are defined using set theory. They're the set of numbers that can be generated through equivalence classes of ordered pairs of integers. This formalism ensures that different representations of the same rational number are treated equally, such as one-half and two-fourths. One fascinating property of rational numbers is that they're dense on the number line. Between any two rational numbers, no matter how close, there exists another rational number between them. You can find one just by taking the average. This property makes them incredibly versatile for approximating other types of numbers. Well, hopefully I can give you some insight in one quick video. Which is exactly the kind of thing the sponsor today's video, Blinkist, does. Blinkist is the incredible app that distills key insights from thousands of nonfiction books and podcasts into just minutes of reading or listening. Whether you're into science, history, self-improvement, or any other field, Blinkist has you covered with summaries from a vast range of categories. I gotta tell you, I'm seriously into this app. I used to spend dozens or even hundreds of hours listening to audiobooks, and Blinkist just breaks it down into minutes. One book that especially resonated with me was Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's all about the small changes you can make that lead to remarkable results which is really what Blinkist is all about. And Blinkist just launched a new feature called Blinkist Spaces. It's a really cool feature that allows you to create a space with your friends or family to share and discuss your favorite titles. It's kind of like having a portable book club in your pocket, accessible anytime, anywhere. If you're as excited as I am about blending education and entertainment and getting key insights from these Blinks, then I've got some good news for you. You can get started for free with a 7-day trial, and after that, get 25% off Blinkist's annual premium plan by clicking the link in the description of this video. 
Thanks very much to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Check out the link below to subscribe. As comprehensive as they may seem, the rational numbers have their limitations. There are numbers which cannot be expressed as a simple ratio of integers, leading us to the realm of irrational numbers, which is another category that sort of challenges our intuition. These numbers can't be represented as a ratio of two integers. In other words, they defy representation in the simple A over B form. The most famous examples of irrational numbers are probably things like pi and square root of 2. Pi, of course, is the ratio of the circle's circumference to its diameter, yet paradoxically, it can't be expressed as a finite decimal or simple fraction. In modern math, irrational numbers are formally defined as real numbers that are not rational. They have lots of intriguing properties, such as non-repeating, non-terminating decimal expansions. While irrational numbers might seem abstract and disconnected from reality, they're integral to our understanding of the numerical universe. They fill in the gaps, so to speak, between rational numbers and completing the continuum of the real number line. Which brings up the concept of real numbers. This category encompasses both rational and irrational numbers, forming a complete and continuous set that fills the entire real number line. The real numbers are a cornerstone in mathematics serving as the foundational field for calculus, analysis, and many other branches of math. They allow us to quantify and understand a wide range of phenomenon, from the simplest of equations to the most complex scientific fields. The formal definition of real numbers involves advanced mathematical concepts, but these rigorous definitions ensure that real numbers behave consistently and predictably adhering to the axioms and properties we expect from a complete ordered field. Despite their ubiquity, real numbers aren't without their limitations. For example, they can't represent quantities like the square root of negative one, leading us to explore even more generalized number systems like the complex numbers. These numbers introduce an entirely new dimension to our numerical universe. Quite literally, they're two-dimensional numbers. Complex numbers are formed by adding a real part and an imaginary part, usually denoted as A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers, and I is the imaginary unit defined to be the square root of negative 1. Where the square root of negative 1 is undefined in terms of real numbers, in the complex plane, it's a reality. This concept really originated as solutions to equations that couldn't be solved only using real numbers. For example, x squared plus 1 equals 0 has no real solutions, but it does have two complex solutions, i and negative i solve this equation. The concept of complex numbers has transformed mathematics and science. These numbers are fundamental in fields like electrical engineering, quantum mechanics, and even understanding intricate patterns like fractals. The numbers themselves also have fascinating properties. For instance, they can be represented in polar form, which makes multiplication and division very elegant. The complex numbers extend our numerical framework beyond the limitations of real numbers, allowing us to solve problems and describe phenomenon that otherwise would be impossible to tackle. But believe it or not, we've only scratched the surface of the numerical universe. When we look at complex numbers, we're talking about two dimensions. But what if we extend this concept into four dimensions with the quaternions? These are typically represented as A plus BI plus CJ plus DK, where A, B, C, D are real numbers, I, J, K are the fundamental quaternion units. They have specific multiplication rules which make this a non-commutative number system, but in simpler terms, that means the order in which you multiply numbers matters. These numbers have application in various fields, most notably in computer graphics, robotics, and aerospace engineering. They're particularly useful in representing rotations in three-dimensional space, something crucial for fight simulation and video game design. Mathematically, these are a well-defined algebraic structure 
and form a division algebra over the real numbers, which basically means you can add, subtract, multiply, and even divide them, much like real numbers. But our journey is far from over, because the next set of numbers challenge our very understanding of size and scale, the hyperreal numbers. Hyperreal numbers include all the real numbers we're familiar with, but they also incorporate infinitesimal and infinitely large numbers. An infinitesimal hyperreal number is a number greater than zero, but smaller than any positive real number. Conversely, an infinitely large hyperreal number is greater than any real number. Hyperreal numbers are used to give a rigorous foundation to calculus, a field that inherently deals with the infinitely small and infinitely large. They allow us to define derivatives and integrals in a way that avoids the ambiguities and complexities of traditional limits. And just when you thought the numerical universe couldn't get more fascinating, we've arrived at surreal numbers. The construction starts with the empty set and proceeds by defining new numbers in terms of previously defined ones. This process generates an incredibly rich and diverse set of numbers, including all the real numbers, infinitesimals, and infinite numbers. But what sets surreal numbers apart is their sheer generality. They form a field much like the real numbers, but also contain numbers that are smaller than any positive real number and larger than any real number. This makes them a natural extension of both real and hyperreal numbers. And while these surreal numbers may seem far removed from everyday experience, they do offer some insights into mathematical structures and relationships that aren't readily apparent in more familiar number systems. Yet there are other numbers as well. The so-called piatic numbers are a concept that also seem quite counterintuitive. These numbers, unlike real and complex numbers, are rooted in our geometric intuition. Piatic numbers arise from a completely different notion of distance and size. They're defined on a prime number p and extend the rational numbers in a way that's fundamentally different from real or complex numbers. They're equipped with a metric, a measurement of distance that leads to some truly bizarre yet consistent properties. For example, in this world, the closer you get to infinity, the smaller you become, the transfinite numbers. Not all infinities are created equally. In fact, some infinities are larger than others. This led to the concept of ordinal and cardinal numbers, which are used to classify different sizes of infinity. In the world of transfinite numbers, we encounter paradox and counterintuitive results. For example, the set of all natural numbers and the set of all even numbers have the same size, even though clearly one is a subset of the other. This challenges our intuitive understanding of size and quantity. These numbers take us to the edge of our numerical universe, challenge our preconceptions, and expand our understanding of what numbers can be. Which brings us back to our original question, what's a number? And I think after this, you'll probably agree that that answer is not trivial. Each type of number serves as a cornerstone for different branches of mathematics and as applications that extend into various fields of science and engineering. And this concept of what a number is has evolved historically, influenced by different cultures and mathematical thinkers. And although there's probably not a universal agreement on what the definition of a number is, you might say it's a mathematical object used to count, measure, or label, something that represents a quantity. But I think it's even more than that. It's not just a symbol or a concept. It's a versatile tool, a historical artifact, and a limitless field of study. And if you loved talking about these numbers, I promise with all my heart, you're going to find these numbers incredibly interesting. Some of these will really blow your mind. Click the video on the screen to check them out. I'll see you in that one.